This right here is the type of video that should go viral. This is the type of video that everybody should be watching and everybody should share for all those people who are deconstructing. You should be putting this video out. But guess what? This is the kind of video that does not go viral. You know why? Because it's not going to be all flashy. It's not going to have a whole bunch of pictures and shit zooming in and out, zooming in and out. It's just going to be pure information and pure thought process. And for that reason right there, because people got to use their brain and they're not being entertained, it doesn't go viral. So what are we talking about here? What we're talking about is one of the reasons why I easily could deconstruct it from Christianity, because Christianity within itself doesn't make sense from the very beginning if you're able to mash things up. Most of the time when people are reading the Bible, they read Matthew, then they read Mark, and then they read Luke, and then they read John. They just keep on reading, and they don't really think about if things in Luke and things in Matthew match up, even though both of them are given Jesus' origin story. But in the origin story of Jesus, there are many complications which go unnoticed for most people. One of the first things is considering his birth. We're not even going to look at the fact that in the lineage, that there are more people in one than they are in the other one, and all the names don't match. Just not pay attention to that. We're just going to look at his birth. When was Jesus born? Was Jesus born in the year zero? Was he born in the year 1 AD? Was Jesus born when Herod was king over Judea? Or was he was Jesus born during a census under the governor Quirinius from Syria? Which time frame was he born? Because he could not have been born during both. Of course, when you read Matthew, you find out that Jesus was born during the time frame of Herod. And because he was born during the time frame of Herod, and Herod had said that he wanted to kill all the babies because the Magi had came and said that a new king of Ju Judea has been born. And Herod gave out the decree to kill every child who was about three years old to a, just born. Which, by the way, just side note, would have included John the Baptist. And so therefore, John the Baptist should have been murdered, death killed as well. But he wasn't. But according to that story, that's when it had to happen. Well, when did Herod die? Well, Herod died between 4 and 1 BCE. So that means that when Jesus, Mother Mary, and Father Joseph were told by the angel to run down to Egypt, that that would have had to happen somewhere between 4 to 1 BCE that they went to Egypt. And that he was born. And then they came out of Egypt after Herod died. If that was the only origin story of Jesus, that would work. But it's kind of like the Fantastic Four movie with Fox, how they have multiple origin stories for the same team. The Luke version gives you a different story. You see, in Luke, Jesus was born during the census by Quirinius from Syria because Augustine Caesar had decreed that everybody in the Roman Empire must be numbered so that tasks can be done. Now, at no time frame historically did that ever happen, and at no time frame did any census require the person to go back to their home state. So, Joseph going back to Bethlehem because he's from the house of David actually wouldn't happen. But According to this story, that's when it happened. Well, when did this happen? Well, that didn't happen until 6 CE. So according to the Jesus narrative of Mary and Joseph not having a space in the end to give birth and that they had to go down into a manger, well, that had to have happened around 6 BCE, 6 or 7 BCE, in order for it to happen during the census that the Romans were taken according to the governor Quirinius coming from Syria to take account of Judea. So when was Jesus born? Was he born in 4 BCE? 2? 3? 2? 1 BCE? Or was he born in 6 BCE? Did he run down to Egypt? Or did he stay like in Luke and after the 8th day his mother and father took him to the temple in Jerusalem, the very place that Herod was supposed to be trying to kill people, took him to Jerusalem, had him circumcised, christened him and given him his name, and then they returned back to Galilee. 
and then every year return to Jerusalem to do their Passover deal. And then it skips to when he was 12. And he said, I'm about my father's work. So, those two stories con contradict each other. They are in confliction. Is that a real word? I might have used it wrong. But they are conflicting one another. <laughs> But the reason why Matthew's version has to have Jesus coming out of Egypt, because Matthew is trying to force the Jewish people to believe that Jesus was the Messiah by having it fit the narrative of Hosea 1, 11, 1, where it says, out of Egypt, I will call my son. So the reason why Matthew made him come out of Egypt is so that they can force the Old Testament to fit him as a Messiah. Luke didn't give a damn. But Matthew was trying to force an issue. So my question is this to you. If the root of the tree is spoiled at the birth, is the fruit of the tree also then there spoiled? It's a question you have to ask yourself. The answer came back to me. The root of both trees were spoiled. Therefore, the tree is spoiled. And I do not partake of spoiled fruit. That was my answer. What's your answer? But always remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibration. I bet you this one won't go viral. <laughs>